Hello everybody, in this video I am going to show you how to convert a WordPress website into a static website and then throw it on AWS S3 and use your own custom domain. I'm going to be using uh, WordPress, obviously, a plugin called Simply Static, which I'm going to show you how to install. Uh, obviously, Amazon AWS S3, and you need an account there. Uh, and then the last thing is going to be Cloudflare. But that's only for me because that's where I manage all of my domains. You may manage your domains elsewhere, and it'll be very similar for you. Um, so why might somebody want to do this? Uh, well, for me personally, I have an old website that I don't update anymore. It's been many years, and I want to move it to an archive state. And so I'm going to be leaving WordPress, which has vulnerabilities and you need to keep it updated. And there's a ton of plugins that can make it run really, really slow. And then move it over to a static website, which runs super fast since it's just HTML and CSS. And then just move it over to AWS hosted in S3. It doesn't get much traffic, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. All right, with that said, let's just jump into it. All right, I'm starting this video on the Simply Static website. This is the plugin we're gonna be using, but we don't actually need this website at all, uh, unless you wanna look at the documentation at all for your uses. So I'm just gonna close this, and that's gonna pull you up to my website. And this is hosted on um, uh, WordPress right now. You can see I haven't updated it in a long time, 2018, but even if we go back a couple of posts, we're gonna have 2016. So this is just a very much an inactive website. Um, and so you can see I'm already logged in because it has this menu up here. If you're not logged in yet, you can just go to slash wp-admin. This is the universal login page for all WordPress sites. Um, unless you're using wordpress.com, that's slightly different than self-hosting WordPress. If you don't know the difference or if you're just going to wordpress.com, yours is gonna be different. This is actually just for self-hosted WordPress instances. Okay, so with that said, I'm logged in now. Um, I'm doing this for real, so let's do it in real time. I'm gonna to go to plugins on the side and add new plugin. Uh, oh, one other thing I just wanna mention, you may have a bunch of updates. So plugins may have a number here. You may also need to update uh, your WordPress site. Make sure you get all of those up to date before doing all of this. Um, but like I said, plugins, add new plugin. We're gonna search for simply static. Just type that in, wait a couple of seconds, and it'll appear right now. Install now, wait a few seconds. and then activates. Great, this is activated. And you can see I have a ton of plugins here. Uh, so this is gonna now be on the side right here. So we're gonna see Simply Static in the menu bar here. And let's click on that. This is the activity logs. I'm gonna go to general. We're not gonna actually change any of the settings here, um, but let's double check deployment. Deployment method zip archive. This is what I want, so I'm gonna keep this setting. And then I'm gonna to go to activity log so I can see what's happening and press generate static files. Okay, great. This didn't work correctly, which is something I wanted to show in this video in case you have this issue too. We're gonna to go to diagnostics and we can take a look that this says that everything is a green check except for this PHP version. Um, I had this issue before and I did a lot of digging into it. I was really confused because my PHP version is 7.4. I was able to check that. So this is hosted at Namecheap. So I went to my cPanel and I was able to look at my PHP version uh, and it is 7.4, so I'm not sure why I'm getting this error. And then what I realized is there was a cache plugin that was causing issues. So I'm gonna go to my plugins, installed plugins, and I think it was light cache. Uh, where is it? Light speed cache. I'm gonna deactivate this. And then let's go back and see if Simply Static works. Wonderful, I'm on activity log. I'm waiting for this to load just to make sure it's all good. Yeah, so see how it says setting up and it says it fetched? This means that it's actually working correctly now. Um, and so it's generating here. This actually takes some takes a little while. So you will probably maybe even step away from your computer and come back or close this tab and come back to it. So I'm going to skip ahead in this video now. 
Hello everybody, I am back. That took a little bit longer than I remember. So as you can see from the logs, we started this at 8.16 and it took a little bit over an hour. It ended at 9.29. Um, so keep that in mind. You can close this tab. You can continue anything else and just come to it. This is running on your remote server rather than your local computer. Um, so that's totally fine. Uh, I'm going to click here to download and let's allow downloads. Loading here. Okay, great. So this is my downloads folder. Um, it looked like it automatically unzipped. I didn't realize that it was going to do that. Um, but if you see a zip file here, you can just uncompress it. And then this is the folder we need. This is what we're gonna upload to AWS S3. So let's get started with that. Go back to uh, your browser and open AWS. Uh, this is going to assume that you already have an AWS account. Um, another thing you're going to want to do is don't do any of this bucket creation, bucket management as a root user. Best practice is going to be create an IAM role, give it the permissions that you want, which could be administrator permissions, and then log into that IAM role rather than using root. That's a little bit beyond what we're setting up here, but that is what I have done here. So this is our console home. Let's go to S3. <clears throat> and we're going to create a bucket. I'm gonna choose the region of US East 1, gonna be a directory, a general purpose. For the bucket name, you need to add, to make this the full domain name that you want to use. So if you are going to be pointing a domain name here, this needs to be the domain name. So for me, that is novice no longer.com because that is the website that I was using. Uh, and then, Okay, this says you can copy settings from existing buckets. So theoretically, I could just copy from my other public website thing. Uh, I'm not going to do that. So I'm gonna show you how to set it all up. Uh, so this next setting we need to look at is block public access settings for this bucket. We do want the public to be able to look at this website. So I'm gonna turn this, uh, uncheck this uh, and acknowledge that anything that's put in this bucket could be public. Uh, I don't need any tags, but you can add tags if you want. And then let's create this bucket. Wonderful, so noviceNoLonger.com. I'm going to click into this bucket and the next thing we need to do, uh, actually let's upload everything first. We're gonna have to do permissions next. Uh, I'm gonna do upload and let's drag and drop. So let's just take everything here. I did select uh, command A to select all, and then I'm going to drag them here. And then let's upload. Again, it's gonna upload everything, so I'll skip ahead so you don't need to wait for this. And we're back. As you can see, upload succeeded. We have all the different things done. And so we can close this. Wonderful. So we're gonna set some permissions for this bucket to allow it to be accessible publicly. So just because we unchecked that thing previously doesn't necessarily mean that everything is public. We actually have to create a bucket policy. So let me copy and paste this bucket policy. So <clears throat> I'm going to include a link to this in the description of this video. It's a pretty simple bucket policy. Let's edit, let's paste it in here. Uh, and this you want to be your domain, domain I, well, your bucket name, which should be the same as your domain name. So novice no longer.com. Wonderful. And let's just save changes here. Let's go to the properties tab. We're gonna go down to the very bottom and see how it says static website hosting. 
We're gonna edit this and we're gonna enable static website hosting. Index document is index.html. And let's save changes. And this will be the moment of truth to see if this actually works. This is gonna give us a URL here. So let's click on that. And there we go. Now we have a WordPress site that's no longer a WordPress site. This is just a static website hosted in S3. So the very last thing we need to do is point our domain name, which is currently pointing to uh, WordPress to go towards this distribution. So for me, that's going to be in Cloudflare. Uh, and again, this will be wherever you host domains. I previously used Namecheap. Um, I recently switched over to Cloudflare just because Cloud Cloudflare sells the uh, uh, domain names at a cost. Uh, and so they're gonna be probably like five or six dollars cheaper per year. And so I finally like switched everything over. So let's find novicenolonger.com. I'm gonna go to the DNS settings. And you can see you got a bunch of stuff that is a holdover from when I used to do things over at Namecheap. Uh, and so I'm going to just delete all of these. All right, so these records are all deleted. So we need to create some new records that point to S3. So we're going to do a CNAME record. And let's do this dub dub dub. And the target is going to be this bucket URL. So copy this and paste this. We can do proxy, that's totally fine. Uh, we're gonna have to delete this HTTP. So let me just copy this and let's save. And let's do one more, add record. Also going to be a CNAME record. We're gonna do at and then put there and save. This can take up to 48 hours to do it, but usually it's much faster than that. So let's go to novice no longer and it is loading. Let's double check. So you can see I tried to go to WordPress admin like I did at the beginning of the video to let me log in, but I'm getting this Cloudflare or this S3 error. So that means everything is correct and this URL is now officially pointing to the S3 bucket.